this video series, we're going to go over two different ways to make a backup image. Basically, an image of the machine without running sysprep, so that later, in the next video, if we run sysprep and have any issues, we can restore back to this point without having to reinstall the operating system and be completely reset up fresh. We can instead just restore back to this point in time. Ghost Solution Suite has the ability to do some backups, but it's not a backup solution. So I would recommend if a person's looking to do backups regularly that they look at a backup solution that has maybe some better tools for timing and validating the images and, and such like that. But we can go ahead and do some backup, simple backups here. This is a clean machine that I have that shortly I'll be making a sysprep image of that will then be my master image. I'm going to go ahead and right click and quick disk image. Quick disk image and we are going to not schedule it yet because I'd like to look at a couple of things but then I'll show it to you here. So here is under system jobs, image jobs, create an image. So I previously had one in here and now I have a new one. If we go to create disk image, we can open up here and we can see some of the information that's being done. Our basic settings are, are all filled in for us. This is where our image is going to live. Anytime we see the dot slash, that is the express share under images, under windows, and then it gave it the computer name for my, my name. And we are not running sysprep on this job. Next, we'll come back and, and do that in the next video. And basically everything else is, is going to be fine here. So we'll finish that and it is queued for this machine and we will go ahead and start now. So that machine will boot to automation and we will start an image create here. We can see here the machine received the job and is restarting itself. And here we are loading the files. Because we used automation folders, it's very quick at loading. There's no time to deliver the file. It just immediately starts booting from it. When we, every machine has a number assigned to it. When we go to properties of a machine, we can see that this machine has an ID of uh, ending in 05. So if we go into here, we can also then see that we have a .bat file ending in 05. And we're going to open this with Notepad. And this is basically our script that is being ran. So it's running the Altera Share Ghost Ghost 64. And it's performing a clone. Mode create source is drive 1. Here we can see on our local drive 1 is our source, and that would be appropriate. And the destination is dot backslash images, windows, CL10, 1803, etc. And sure, so that it doesn't ask for prompting. And Z1 is a basic level of compression. We have a couple other different things happening here. Also going to copy some files and then go to the end of the config. So it's good to see what is happening by being able to come in here. And the reason I mention it is if things go poorly and we end up with errors and we're unable to identify why we have an error, we would maybe want to look at the bat file to determine what was being executed and how then that is being ran. Now, the other thing that is going to be good to know in the ghost folder, so if we go up a level here and go into ghost, then there sometimes will be a ghost error uh, or ghost error log. Um, sometimes it's a text file. Also in the deployment server, depending on how the script is being ran, we'll end up with a ghost error if things go wrong at the ghost executable level. You can see on my server I don't have any of these because I haven't had an error yet. But if I were to kill ghost partway through or interrupt it somehow to cause it to fail, then uh, I would end up with a ghost error log that would then tell me more about the ghost executable and what was happening. So while that's happening, let's make a fresh job. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to take and make a new job and we're going to call it So I'm just going to call it backup image before sysprep because I would like to again make a backup image. So I'm going to add a task to this job. And I'm going to go ahead and create disk image is my task. You can see here are all the different tasks available. Create disk image is the one that we're going to be going for here. 
Under advanced settings, by default, we can leave this alone. If we are running out of drive space potentially, maybe we would want to optimize it for size, but leaving it there is fine. We have the ability to put into a description here that'll stay with the ghost image file. So if you move the image file to a different machine, you'll still be able to see that description if you open it with Ghost Explorer. So we're just going to tell it OK. This hard drive, uh, number one, is the one that we want to take our image of. Uh, if we had a machine with multiple drives, we could select a different drive. Or we could take a partition only image and select only the one partition that we wanted. Keep in mind with the GPT and Windows images, 10 uh, UEFI HL. systems, the OS requires multiple partitions. We have a pre put. little partition that uh, okay. Microsoft lays down, and then we have the so OS partition. Right? And so backup, a partition so only image drive images may not be backup what you're after because image. some of those pre files yeah, wouldn't be cool. included. So we're going to stick with a disk image. We do need to tell it where we're going to save our image at. So we are going to default to our images here. We're going to use the Ghost Solution Suite server share. If you were using a different share, we would then have to use the drive letter available from Windows PE. So when that machine is booted into PE, we would have to know what drive letters are available. I'll show you what we mean here, I think. I can show you while this is running. Whilst we were creating our automation folders, we created a, an additional map drive called I. And the I drive was mapping to our server. And so our images, um, I drive maps, let me show you real quick. The I drive maps over here to the images folder. So if I wanted to new folder here, I could make backup and then in my job, I could say that I would like to have the image come from the iDrive. I can confirm that. Actually, it would just be iDrive and then backup because my, my images folder is the share. So if we do a quick DIR again here, we can now see that I have a backup. So my path for my job needs to match in Windows as it does in Windows PE. So there we go. I'm going to put it on the iDrive under the backup folder under, but I'm not going to do image. I'm going to go ahead and go with CL dash win 10, win 10 dash 1803 01. That way I know which one it is. And I'm going to go ahead and put 12 of 7 of 18. There we go. And we are not going to use sysprep. We'll do that in the next step. We're not going to mess with don't boot to. And we're just going to use the default automation here. So we shall go next. Finish. OK. Now we have a backup image. Now, this, Im this job, we have to be careful because I've made the image file a specific file. I wouldn't want to run the same job on several different machines because it is going to overwrite the file because I have a file name here. So I would make a new job for a new machine. Or I would use a system variable there. So we'll go ahead and run this immediately. And we will bring over my machine. Let's see how long it takes to get that. While that's waiting, let's go here and see how our ghost image is coming. So we're 33%. That's great. We are. It is restarting. Restarting. I got the job, and we can go up here to my deployment server in our images folder. And under Windows, I should have then some files. So the GHO file is the first file of the image. It'll stop at two gigs and then create a GHS a segment file. So we have our GHO and our GHSs, and then eventually, when the image is created, it'll end in one of the GHS files. And all of these files are necessary to make up an image. The request comes in, how can I make a single file image? There are ways to trick it. The map drive that we're saving to needs to be at two gigs. If we were saving the image locally and the drive that we were saving it to was NTFS, we'd be able to save it as a single file, but I would recommend keeping it at two gig pieces. When you are moving the files across the network, when you are later backing them up, or when your antivirus is scanning, 
to have a gigantic file that's maybe 10 or 12 gigs in size really can be problematic. Also for Windows with swap files and such, it just it can be difficult. So it would be best to just keep it at the two gig mark. Um, if you need to make a folder for every image, that's fine. And then each of your images, all of the files in there are one uh, for, for one machine. So a couple of points there. All right. And the step of uploading disk image from the server, this is all it's going to tell us until it's completed. Let's go over here. Here is our O1 machine, and we can see it has started. And here's our O, oops, let's see the one. Here's the O2. We can see we're at 41%. If we go over here to my I drive, I'll be able to see in my backup folder that we're starting to build a file. There we go, we can see that the task is finished up and we are booting back into production. We have this option here, the choose operating system, because we installed the, the um, automation folder. So there is a document on how to change this timer if a person would want to. There's a way to script that to be done. So take note uh, of that if that's something we need to do. Go over here to the server. See here is completed and we can go over here to my Deployment server under my images, under Windows, and here we can see my images, 13 gigs. So we've got our GHO, our main GHO, and then a bunch of two gig chunks, and then a last GHS file to, to take a look at. In 3.3 GA, there is an issue where if we try to open this with Ghost Explorer, potentially there'll be an error. We should be, there we go, so here's our error. The way to check if a ghost image is good or not, a way to check, is to go ahead and open it with Ghost Explorer. But there is an issue, and we'll bring up that uh, KB there. And hopefully in 3.3 RU1, that will be taken care of. So hopefully by the time you see this, it'll be a resolved issue. What I'd like to do now is do a restore of this image so that we can show the process that is done to restore an image now. So we'll go ahead and make a new job. Probably want to start making some folders and putting these in. Restore in 10, 1803-01. And we'll go in here so we can double click on it, or when we open it, we can go and add, and we're going to distribute a disk image. So we'll go ahead and select our options. Since we're going to do the 01 machine, we can grab the image off of the Altera share, express under images, windows, here we go. Oh, that one was the O2. Well, we'll do O2 then. And okay. If we wanted to do partition stuff, if we had like user partition where all the user data was at and we only wanted to restore the first partition, get in here and do that. Generally speaking though, we're going to do the full disks. This image was not prepared using sysprep, so we're not going to check that. And I'll go into a different video later on the data transfer modes. But for now, uh, we are going to uh, also uncheck the perform configuration task. What that's going to do is rename the machine and join it back to the uh, domain if appropriate. But because this image was just created, it is a, a good backup and should be able to go back without needing to rejoin the domain and such. If I were to push this down uh, after a given amount of time, my domain controller would not be aware of that computer account. It would have expired, the one that was in the image, and so we would need to have it join the domain and perform this configuration task. We're not going to do that today, though. So we can see our status here, of, or the path to the image, just to make sure we're looking at the right one. And we're going to go ahead and rename this because I'd like to be keeping it together. 1803, and we're going to go ahead and restore it to the 1803.02 system. We're going to run this job immediately, and we'll bring up the client. That was quick, it was in communication. We'll go ahead and it's going to restart, and then it's going to boot to the automation folder that's on that machine. That'll save us some time. 
can see now um, the agent communicated and received the job and executed the batch file that is restoring this uh, image. So this will take some time and we'll cover sysprep deployments on another video. But that's how we create, that's how we restore an image.